This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It's the weekend of May 8th, 9th, and then Monday the 10th. And it's also Mother's Day weekend. And we're blessed to have this day as our speaker, uh, Chad Van Meter, our Minister of Community Engagement. Thank you so much for joining us. As we worship God, we call upon His name. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's make confession of our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our first scripture reading describes something exciting in the book of Acts. In Acts chapter 10, uh, the gospel opens up beyond the Jewish community to the Gentiles, and that would include uh, descendants or ancestors of both you and me. 
Peter here is speaking to Cornelius and to his uh, friends and to his family, Cornelius being a Gentile. Peter says, we are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, Surely no one can stand in the way of their being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. This is the word of the Lord. Our holy gospel for this day is found in John chapter 15. Jesus says, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. And I now invite forward the Minister of Community Engagement here at Holy Cross, Chad Van Meter. And Chad, I'd like to offer prayer for you before you share your message. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this man, for his heart, for his desire to reach out with the good news of your son, Jesus Christ, beyond our Holy Cross community to draw people in. We pray this day that um, the power of your spirit might inhabit his heart and his message so that what he shares indeed is compelling and draws people in. For this we ask in the name, the power, and for the glory of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Mr. Thank Van Meter. You, Pastor. Thank you. Well, today we're going to talk about two things that are maybe most taken for granted in the world, moms and God. It is Mother's Day weekend, so happy Mother's Day to all you mothers out there, and thank you uh, for all your service and sacrifice in that holy vocation as mother. We honor you guys this weekend. What's the first thing people think about when you mention, and I mean people like not just the churchy friends that you have, but just the normal everyday person in our country, and if you ask them, about church what's the first thing not necessarily about jesus but just about church what's the first kind of things that come to their mind when you mention the word church and these are some things we hear but divisive cultish sort of like a club sometimes 
arrogant people who want to feel superior. In today's world, uh, it's about protecting power for elite people who want to keep things the way they are. Very few people refer or think of the church as something very helpful or connective. It's not necessarily bad, it's just sort of irrelevant. I think of Michelle Pfeiffer's quote about fidelity in marriage. She said it's possible, but not that important, sadly. But in our epistle this weekend, he talks about the the idea that God's laws are not meant to be burdensome. His laws are not meant to be burdensome, they're meant to give us freedom. His laws are meant to give us freedom, and Jesus gives us his law in the gospel today. But think about the gospel. If the, if the laws aren't meant to be burdensome, certainly his gospel is all about freedom. So if at the end of our presentation about the church and about God and who we are to people, if at the end of that presentation they feel like it's all about burdens, divisiveness, rules, then we're doing something wrong. And today, can we learn to reframe Christianity and to reframe the idea that that Christ is grace and truth in love? Can we bring that to the forefront to make our church a place of belonging? That's what we're going to talk about today. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you invite us in, that you invite us into this mystery of grace and truth in love, and that you call us to act in that. Help us to to learn how to to present that truth and grace to people and to our world in ways that will compel their hearts towards you, Lord, using your spirit to give us the wisdom and the power in Jesus' name. Amen. So I love Peter's sermon here to this group of Gentiles. And he's talking, and all of a sudden the spirit falls on these people And the Jewish folks that were there, and by the way, the early church was all Jewish people, right? They all had the same lens and basic framework. They all had the commandments. They all had the same shared kind of worldview and values together. And so they all kind of knew where they were coming from. And now in Acts 10, we see the gospel widens to these Gentiles. Peter has this vision, and all of a sudden, Things are opening up. And the Jews that were with Peter that day were astonished. Astonished. Why were they so surprised that Gentiles would accept the gospel? But maybe the word includes a little bit of fear. Because think about that. All the same viewpoint. They were all coming from a Jewish perspective at the time. And now you're inviting all these Gentiles all their cultural views, all their different perspectives. They don't have the same worldview. They don't have the law like you had it. And that's a scary idea. I mean, think about your Thanksgiving dinners at home being a little awkward when you get all the family members around the table. Now we're inviting Jews and Gentiles, all these different cultural perspectives, and we've got to find the through line, the thing that's going to unite them all, the thing that's going to connect them all into this very intimate thing called the church. So, that's a tall order, right? And it could be a big disaster. God took a risk there, bringing all these different kinds of people groups together in one thing. And this is why Jesus iterates it so clearly to his disciples, in grace and truth, in love. In grace and truth, in love. That is the thing big enough to pull us all together. If, and it kind of assumes that our allegiances in the church then must be primarily to God's kingdom, to God's world, to what Peter called our heavenly citizenship. If other associations become more important than our heavenly citizenship, then you can just see the divisions start to come up even in the church And suddenly, well, they're the the Gentiles, and we're the Jews, and we're this, and we're this, and they don't think like we do, and we don't really like those people. If our heavenly citizenship is first, and if Christ's command to love is first, all that goes down. I like to remind people that Jesus in the Twelve had Matthew and Simon. 
Matthew was a tax collector. He worked for the Roman government. He was paid by the Romans to take taxes from the Jewish people. He was not liked by many Jews. And then you had Simon, who was a zealot, who literally wanted to use any force necessary to take the Roman government out. He despised Rome and its any kind of connection it had with, with the Israel. And both of these guys were in the 12. So you see two very different perspectives coming into that one group of 12. And again, the question is, what's big enough to unite all these different kinds of perspectives in one place? And it's pretty simple. It's God's love. And it might be mom's food for some of us, but it's God's love and truth that brings it all together in one place. Now think of this for one second, and honestly reflect on this. Would you believe Jesus? Would you believe in Jesus if he was a jerk? If the scriptures revealed that Jesus really didn't care that much about people, that he was unkind, that he was unwilling to help, that he really was kind of just a, a self-centered jerk, or that he was, let's say, a coward and never stood up to the Pharisees and just got walked all over. Would you follow Jesus? Would you trust him as your Lord and Savior today if Jesus was a jerk or if Jesus was a coward? And I think the answer is pretty simple. No, I don't think you would. I don't think I would. Because he was faithful to the end, though, because he was not unkind, because he was compassionate, slow to anger, abounding in love because he was, was strong, because he, was, because he lived the truth in love, we follow him. He was faithful to the end. And we believe in Jesus because he was just so compelling. And he's still compelling, by the way, today, as much as he was there. And in Peter's sermon, he said, Jesus had not been seen by all physically. Only, you know, so many people in that day saw Jesus and got to be around him. And now Jesus is actually seen through us. That we reveal Jesus to the world. And to be honest, that's a little scary. We are sort of the measure for his truth and grace in love. And he reminds us. Love each other as I have loved you. And he loves us perfectly and sacrificially. And he sets this very high bar of his own death for our sakes as the kind of love we should have for each other. And think about the world we live in who increasingly maybe want the benefits of religion, but certainly not the responsibilities. Think about the divisiveness a culture that prides itself on condemning anybody who thinks, who's bold enough to think differently. And just the, the absolute separatism that's going on. We're in, a, we're in a world that's desperate to experience and see an example of God's grace. So I say, let those unpleasable people who love to judge and ridicule and slander let them do so. Jesus said, rejoice when people speak ill of you on my behalf. He said, rejoice because you're in good company. And moms, when everyone forgets to say thanks, when you're left to clean up everything on your own, when no one sees the work you do behind the scenes, God sees. And that's holy acts that you're doing. As holy as the sermons we're up here preaching, the things you do to live out your faith in action, grace and truth in love every day. The church may be the last place for grace in today's world. A place of belonging where we're saying we're belonging comes first because God loves you. And maybe, again, it's the last place on earth for people to experience love in grace and truth. So Lord, we do confess this day that we have not always opened 
armed, accepted people who think differently from us, who respond to your word and to your Holy Spirit. That sometimes, like those Jews in the room with Peter, we're kind of scared, we're astonished that you would be merciful to people. People who aren't like us, who don't think like us. And we confess that we have failed to love as you have loved us. But we are grateful this morning, Lord, this day, that you would forgive us, that you would graciously reach out, remind us of who we are, and remind us of what you've already done for us. And that we can go in peace and go in the courage that you will bear fruit through us as we seek to live out that grace and truth in love. One of the things that continues to amaze me and what I am just so very grateful for is the generosity of God's people here at Holy Cross. You respond, and you respond in a way where we are able to put our focus on extending the kingdom, not worrying about, boy, where is the next dollar going to come from? So thank you so much for your generosity and in the spirit of the message that Chad gave this day. I found this stanza uh, from a hymn, quite frankly, that I have never sung before. It's uh, in the stewardship section of our hymnal. It's called, The Temple Rang with Golden Coins. It's about the widow's might. And the last stanza really picks up this idea of belonging. So, would you pray with me? Lord, help us all with you to yield whatever love demands and freely give as you have given with open hearts and hands. Lord Jesus, we pray this in your name. Amen. And we continue in prayer. And obviously these messages are recorded sometime before uh, they are shared with you. And Consequently, there are things that go on in the world, things that go on in your life that uh, we cannot anticipate. But we'll give some space in this prayer for you to just add the things that are going on in your life, in the lives of people you care deeply about, and also in the life of our world as we seek to be that church, which is an open-armed, loving church, just wooing through the gospel of Christ, wooing people to belong, to be part of a group of people that truly will care for one another. As it says in the early Christian church, look at them, how they love one another. So please bow your head and pray with me. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, 
We humbly confess this day that um, we haven't been the best marketers for your church. That our world would see church as a place of exclusion, a place of divisiveness, a place of lovelessness, not only grieves and wounds your heart, but should ours as well. So Lord, we ask this day that your church might be what Christ intended it to be, a place of belonging, a place that goes to the common person who meets people where they are at and shares the love and forgiveness that you have won for us on Calvary's cross. Lord, it has been said that people don't care what we know until they know that we care. And um, people don't love what we know until they know that we love. So we pray that we might, through our words, through our actions, through our deliberations, as a body of faith at Holy Cross, that we might reflect the incredible love that has been shown toward us through your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray that this might be a place of grace, a place where people experience grace and truth and love. Lord, we pray for those whom we love. And on this Mother's Day weekend, we thank you for the gift of uh, the miracle of motherhood. Lord, some of us have had phenomenal experiences. Some of us have experiences that cause us pain to this day. That's what happens in a sin-sick world. So Lord, we ask for uh, the grace and the wonder to accept uh, the blessings that have been bestowed on us through mothers, and also the grace and the love and the forgiveness to um, to accept those things, Lord, that uh, maybe aren't exactly the way that we would have them to be. And Lord, in a world of families, in a world that so often is torn apart by war, by hatred, by harsh words and actions, we take a moment to reflect on our participation in this and also, Lord, in those... Um, who have been affected by this, including those for whom we care quite deeply. For our world, for our nation, for our state and our cities, Lord, for our congregations and our families. We thank and we praise you and ask that the love of grace and belongingness might be extended as we ask it in the name of your son Jesus who has given us a family prayer of belonging. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Chad, we invite you to have a closing thought to share with us. In a world that's increasingly divisive, we're reminded today that we're called to be Christ's church, centered in grace and truth, lived and expressed in love. A place, and maybe the, the last place left, a place for belonging and grace where people can bring their brokenness to find His wholeness. And with that command, we go forward with energy as our mission to make a Christ-like difference in this world. Thank you, Chad. And as we go forward, 
we go forward with the name of God, the name that was pronounced upon us in our baptism. We go in that strength as we go with this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm.